John Kelly, I'm a planner with the, the Highland Council, and I'm just going to give you a, a quick, uh, short presentation on our pre application advice service for major developments. Probably it's along similar lines as to what you've uh, heard from the other speakers so far. This is a brief overview of the service. Basically, we ask applicants to complete an application form. That is sent in to us four weeks before we have the pre application meeting itself. Four weeks after we have the pre application meeting, uh, the applicant is provided with a pre application advice pack. I'll go into some detail in that in a moment. And then obviously they can take on board the comments that are made in that and uh, hopefully submit an application that addresses all the points that were raised. <coughs> we produce a guide which is available on our website that just gives a brief overview of the service and what people uh, can expect uh, from it. In terms of detail itself, the service has been operational since late 2008. Uh, we introduced a service charge in 2009, which is currently one thousand three hundred pounds, and it's generated well in excess of one hundred fifteen thousand pounds. It was difficult to work out just what the exact figure was uh, that we obtained from the service. We suspect the, the actual figure is significantly higher than that. The two main reasons we could be introduced it. One was because we were looking at an opportunity to obviously raise more income for the council. Secondly, we feel that it's a, a very good value added to the service and uh, a sort of understanding that the Government of Scotland allows you to charge for uh, value added services that are not statutory. The meetings are held monthly uh, and are chaired by a senior officer from the planning service. In terms of how the planning service operates in Ireland, we're essentially split into two administrative areas, a north team and a south team. Uh, that's reflected in our planning committees, we have a north planning committee and a south planning committee. So the meetings are usually chaired by the area planning manager, we have a north manager and a south manager. In terms of submissions to date, there's been 120 major pre-application submissions to the council and in terms of statistically how that compares to the actual number of major applications that have been submitted which is approximately 33 uh, percent so that was something in the region of I think over 360 major applications that have been submitted uh, since the scheme was introduced and I thought there was as I say uh, participate in the service. <coughs> the meetings are held uh, as I said earlier once a, uh, once a month they're attended by a number of council representatives uh, such as transport planning, forestry, landscape, flood team, as well as external agencies such as SEPA, SNH, and then obviously for logistical reasons we would expect uh, someone from Transport Scotland or Historic Environment Scotland to come up to Inverness for the meetings. They do however provide feedback uh, to, to, the, uh, to the, the, the process and their comments are then incorporated into the, the advice pack that goes back into them. The presentation itself uh, basically we set aside an hour and a half uh, for the developer. The developer uh, has a half hour slot to give his presentation and there's then followed a uh, sort of one hour uh, time scale for discussion amongst all the participants, points of clarification and uh, any other general issues that are raised. The response pack is issued four weeks after the meeting and there's a time scale that we stick uh, very rigidly to. We have a 100% success rate in, in issuing the, the packs pack itself, uh, which is basically this document that I have here, it's split into various sections. Uh, it looks at the principal development and gives us some of the key issues and it also gives a clear indication to the developers that they're not going to support an application. It looks at a number of subject headings, policy, constraints, natural heritage, <coughs> design, transport and access, water, historic environment, sustainability, amenity, development contributions and uh, public consultations. At the end of the document, there's a planning application submission checklist, so that contains information uh, that we would expect an application to, to be accompanied by, such as a transport impact assessment, uh, transport <coughs> assessment, flood risk assessment, etc. So there's a tick box that covers each of the, the headings uh, that we have that was out in the end. And we also provide full details of the, the contact uh, of uh, all the participants that are meeting. As well as sending out the advice pack, we issue uh, the applicant with a, a feedback form which basically just sets out a number of questions uh, on how they, they feel the, 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 the value they got from the service. And 
this is a sort of typical response that we've uh, had back, and I'll just read it out to you. From the initial provision of a detailed formal pre-application consultation response, through to public engagement, liaison with, liaison with statutory bodies, mediation with all partners and key issues, assistance with confirming the scope of environmental impact assessment, and supporting documentation for the application submissions, the Highland Council has performed beyond the expectations in respect to being able to work the deadlines and respond quickly to issues that arose during the six-month pre-application period. Now, I'm sure that this is a, a genuine uh, feedback <laughs> from the scheme. I'm also assuming that they actually got planning permission at the, at the end of the process, <laughs> uh, otherwise it may not be quite as, as blowing. Uh, the pre-application advice pack that I've got, that I'll, do, I'll just leave here for people to, to have a look at if, you, if you're interested. It's actually for the Castle Stewart uh, second golf uh, championship course uh, up in Inverness, uh, where the, the Scottish Open is going to be held later this year. Uh, I'm, I'm, informed. I'm not a golfer, so I'm, I'm really uh, <laughs> much interested in it myself. The application, incidentally, is going to our committee tomorrow with a recommendation for approval. Thank you very much.